Three years ago, a crack explorer unit was sent to Antarctica. Their goal, one of the world's great lost ships. These men promptly sent robots under the ice and discovered Sir Ernest Shackleton's endurance in the Weddell Sea. Today, miles from anywhere, the explorers have written their names in history. If you have a problem that no one else can help, need to find a shipwreck, and if you can afford it, maybe you can hire the E.T. For those of you who've missed it, the discovery of the wreck of the Endurance, that symbol of great human fortitude, a refusal to ever give up, has sprinkled stardust over a couple of years. First the deep sea discovery in 2022, then the book, followed by the film, and another book. The story of how Sir Ernest Shackleton led his crew to survival is the stuff of legend, beautifully brought to life in National Geographic's documentary film Endurance. The image of the ship's wreck found in 2022, 3,000 meters under the Weddell Sea in Antarctica, in what looked to be perfect condition, is simply iconic. But now, at the end of National Geographic's film, the greatest reveal of all, a geospatially spot-on 3D model made from a laser scan of Endurance itself. Now everyone can dive the Endurance to get up close and personal with the most remote wreck in the world. The mind boggles. Surely this is a creation of some Hollywood studio, right? But no, Mission Impossible pulled off one giant underwater leap for mankind. The press has lapped it up and the 3D laser scan of the Endurance has gone viral. But what on earth is a 3D laser scan? We're going to unpack exactly how the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust mapped a legend. But before we hear from the experts, let's take a peek at what the noise is all about. Here's the wreck of the Endurance like you've never seen it before. Nico Vincent grew up in Marseille in France, where he spent 17 years cutting his teeth in the world of special projects, developing deep sea exploration technology with Comex, the leader in the subsea industry in the 1970s and 1980s. Nico may have lived his childhood in the French mountains, but he grew up as part of the Jacques Cousteau generation and always dreamed of diving in the ocean. I worked for three years on the success of this search for the most difficult wreck in the world. Finding a shipwreck in the highs is uh, something never been met before. And uh, we were obliged to, to learn everything from scratch. The Antarctic Treaty would not allow us to touch the wrecks. So we needed a solution to digitalize the wreck at very high quality. And for that solution, the Endurance Project turned to an outfit called Voyus in Canada. Luke Richardson comes from the nuclear sector and specializes in mechanical design engineering, project management and manufacturing engineering. 
We are a Canadian tech company based out of Waterloo, Ontario in Canada. So like we're landlocked in the middle of Ontario, not really close to any big bodies of water other than the Great Lakes. So it's kind of strange that a deep sea tech company would be where we are. But, you know, we pull a lot of local talent from the University of Waterloo, which is really known for its engineering. In terms of the company itself, really what our core focus is, is developing underwater systems like optical systems that help us see the depths like we see the surface. So we focus on really high quality hardware like underwater laser scanners, stills cameras, uh, stereo systems, really to build 3D digital twins of subsea assets with extreme accuracy. I think most times when I talk about underwater laser scanners to people outside of the industry, they assume that we strap them onto sharks, uh, which is not true. Searching for wrecks in Antarctica isn't like any other body of water. The ice, alive, always drifting, is a joker. It shatters the best laid plans for fun. Which means the robot searching for endurance had to be versatile to operate far from the research ship as it drifted at the mercy of the elements. The robot had to be smart enough to dive through a hole in the ice no bigger than a basketball court. And hours later, to find its way back to the tiny hole without getting stuck in the ice pack. You, you launch the vehicle through this free water area. 10 to 12 hours later, you have drifted somewhere that was not predictable originally. And you have to come back to this, uh, to this tiny hole. And we deploy up to 8 kilometers of umbilical. Really unusual for on the such industry to be so far from the vessel. We do 32 dives and we got 8 incidents. But like Howard Carter finding the tomb of Tutankhamun in the very last hole he had left to dig in the Valley of the Kings, endurance was finally discovered at the 11th hour. 81% of the area, 120 square miles, had been searched and turned up nothing but wreck debris when the magic happened. Endurance, sitting as majestic as the day it sank, 3,000 meters deep. Crushed concertina-like by surface ice, but more intact than anyone had dared to dream. Where Shackleton failed to trek across the continent of Antarctica, the endurance team won. At the time of discovery, it was a moment of deep emotion, the, the, the result of three years of work. At the same time, I had to keep a cold mind because the scope wasn't finished and there was still a lot of to do, including the 2D model. So how on earth did they make a 3D model never attempted before on any deep sea wreck? The answer lay with Voyas in Canada. The Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust reached for tech that could capture vast data using a combination of LIDAR with 3D photogrammetry and complex mathematical metrology. The Voyas solution in Canada became obvious because the same equipment offered uh, LIDAR, laser system, uh, so LIDAR metrology and photogrammetry for the best of both worlds. So we have what's called laser line scanners, which effectively uses geometry to make 3D point cloud models. So as an example, if you imagine a line projected onto the wall in front of you, uh, if you were directly behind it and you took a picture, that line would look very straight, right? If you take a step to the side, then you can start to see that the step of the line on objects along the wall. That's how we're generating our 3D models, effectively. On the Endurance project, we used two of our commercially available products, so the Insight Pro underwater laser scanner, the Observer Pro stills camera. Both of them are tightly coupled together, and they capture both laser models and stills images at the same time. And it uses the vehicle navigation information to piece those lines together to tell it where it is, to build up a full 3D point cloud model of the object. However, you can't just drop these sensors into the ocean. Sensors can go down 4,000 meters, but it's a really hard time returning them without a vehicle. The team brought out the big guns, a super smart underwater two-ton drone called a Sabertooth developed by Saab. The Sabertooth can uniquely operate as either a free diving AUV or as a surface tethered ROV. Powerful yet lightweight with fully autonomous navigation and 360 degree maneuvering capability. The Sabertooth with Voyager's tech attached could map the icy deep like no other subsea robot. The game was on. 
We had never integrated with a Sabertooth before, so that was kind of unique working through that. And, you know, a hybrid ROV AUV platform is a really unique platform to be on. The magic of the Sabertooth was how it could fly with 60 degrees of roll. The robot worked its way along each side of the wreck in a controlled transect, systematically scanning every plank, bolt and artifact to unheard of one millimeter of accuracy. And they did a really good job of making sure that we got the vantages that we, we needed to. So they were able to pivot, kind of do the lawnmower pattern over the top, but then they could turn on their side and do the, the sides of the wreck so that we got every vantage possible. And then, of course, our systems are in the millimetric scale to generate that high quality 3D model. When you merge 25,000 4K pictures with this level of data, you have already a very, very good accurate level of data. But to rebuild the image of the wreck thanks to the photos. In addition, you scan the wreck with a laser and this laser is shooting every millimeter. So you have a, a, a LIDAR, LIDAR single shot each millimeter of the wreck, which allowing to have a very, very high accurate metrology system. And this is absolutely amazing. Voices cameras with saber-tooth firepower may have been able to take 25,000 photos super swiftly, but the final super model was not created instantaneously with a click of the fingers. We have created a preliminary 3D model in photogrammetry in a few hours. And then he spent months to make the one that you saw in the movie. And the one that you saw in the movie has, uh, has been then shared with a CGI company in New York. They use, in fact, the same technology than us, but with computer able to create Star Wars and Marvel. And when he finally chaired the final model, it was like playing with Holy Grail. I think like most people, we were just blown away at the condition and the state of the wreck. It was incredible to see the initial stills images from the Falkland Maritime Trust and Nat Geo when they found it, but having to actually see and work with the 3D model of the wreck, you get a whole different perspective of the condition and kind of get to explore a little piece of history. Each time you start to play with the model, you cannot stop. You, you are stuck in it. Seeing the model itself kind of felt like it hadn't sunk 3,000 meters underwater. It kind of felt a little bit more like somebody delicately placed it there. Three kilometers underwater, you have to assume things would be moving around and you'd lose a lot of those things sitting on the deck. As the supermodel of the endurance came together, pieces of frozen time snapped into view. There was the likely lost boot of second in command Frank Wilde and dinner plates rolled around the kitchen as the endurance slipped into its watery grave. You discover a new thing every time. For example, we can make the measurement on the hull how many centimeters have the ice crushed the wood. It's, it's amazing. I got an opportunity to be on the first people of the world to discover this unique part of his story with one millimeter resolution and it's just blowing your mind. It's been really amazing. I know we've already got artwork of the endurance on the walls of the office, and we're just ecstatic about, you know, finally being able to show the world what the team did with the endurance. I'm just really proud of everybody on the project. It was just amazing to tell that story and have our small contribution to the finale of uh, the endurance. I think we are really uh, facing a new era we will always push the limits, and I think that mankind want to explore, and uh, we cannot stop that. Uh, I, it's probably, exploration is most probably the only thing which is connecting mankind each other. So, if you look at the mankind story, the only time that all the mankind has been watching the same thing all together over all the planet is when Armstrong work on the moon, showing again that exploration is the only thing which is unifying people and discovering endurance it's an amazing exploration story and uh, i'm very proud to be part of this it's probably the climax of my career The door which is conducting 
to Shackleton cabin is open. And I would dream to go back and send Varkol inside and to look inside Shackleton cabin and why not make again a 3D model inside. Because we discovered the wreck two days before the end of the expedition, unfortunately we have not surveyed the, the, um, the debris field. I, I would love to survey the debris field as well. Uh, because uh, there is probably a lot of exciting things to discover there. When you peer back to just the late 1980s, when I first fell in love with the romance of shipwrecks, few wise heads really could have predicted where we stand today and what the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust pulled off against the odds in the Weddell Sea. And that's why what we do is so thrilling. If you want to see more, check out National Geographic's stunning film Endurance. It will blow your socks off. Why we go, I cannot say. Today is the day. What the impelling force is that makes explorers, I cannot describe. Come on, boys! And as long as there is any mystery on this globe, it is not only man's right, oh my gosh, look at that, but his duty to try to unravel it. And huge thanks to Nico Vincent, Luke Richardson, the Falklands Maritime Heritage Trust, National Geographic, Voice, and everyone on the Endurance 22 project for helping us peek behind the magic curtain at how super 3D laser models worked in the harshest of environments. Rekwatch has loved following this story and will continue to do so. If you fancy reading more, then sign up on our homepage for free access to Rekwatch Magazine's Ice Archaeology Special Issue with an intimate interview with Endurance Director of Exploration, Menson Bound. Don't forget to subscribe too to Rekwatch TV and like this video so we can keep the fun flowing. I've been Dr. Sean Kingsley, thanks for joining us and until next time, deep down we care.